Good evening. Welcome to Community and Technology, where we connect the global community with news, information, resources to hopefully help improve your life. I'm Stu Reed. I'm here with my special guests on our Universal Basic Income Show. I Miss Diana Blackwell, president of Fred Samuel Houses and Harlem Activist, and Eno Schmidt, who's the co-founder of the Basic Income Initiative in Basel, Switzerland and author of, uh, of the film, Basic Income, Cultural Impulse. We've been talking together about basic income, uh, also called unconditional basic income, for some months now. And uh, we're kind of looking to redefine how we reach out to you in the community with this message. Uh, it's, it's ever more important in the COVID environment where so many families and households are struggling with just survival. And uh, a basic income, a universal or unconditional basic income is kind of bubbled back up into the, the, the public discussion uh, because of that. So uh, we were just kicking around before we got started here on the show, some ideas to uh, uh, involve more folks in the show and to spread our listenership and our viewership. And uh, we, of course, would like to hear from you, uh, our, our audience. Uh, but Diana, I think you had a couple of things you wanted to talk about how we're going to move the show and expand our audience. So, uh, thank you. And good evening, everybody. Uh, this has just been an exciting year to just be on the radio and be you know, talk about something that I didn't know much, very much about. I think I'm yeah, really grateful for my teacher, uh, you know, and uh, I've learned a lot. I've gotten excited about uh, UBI and I would like to have this shared with so many other people. And then I would uh, like to also get someone to help us so that we can understand that it's our right to have a basic income if we're going to be alive, not just to live, but be alive. So um, that message has resonated in me ever since I heard about it. And because I live, I deserve an income and I want to know all about it and I want to share it with everyone. And I'd like someone somewhere to begin to sponsor people so that we can go through whatever may uh, come to us and we'll do it with ease and grace until that moment that we are standing back on our feet. Mm -hmm. So I really would like to, you know, share, actually, I would just like Mr. Schmitz to really share his uh, point of view about um, basic income. So I hand it over to you. Thanks, Diana. Hi, people. <clears throat> well, the idea of an unconditional basic income is now running a um, 10 years, 20 years in the discussion. And you saw when the COVID-19 crisis came that even Donald Trump got the idea to give money to people without conditions. And this is just a step in that bit of need in this catastrophe uh, that makes clear first, there's the money to do that. And you can give people money without conditions without, without asking them to do for that what you want them to do. So the idea of an unconditional basic income for everybody is that the basic amount, what you really need to live uh, in a decent way, um, in a modest way, but dignified, should be unconditional for everybody. So this is the basis of all the incomes whether you have a high, high income or low income, there's this amount of the basic income and that should be unconditionally for everybody as a citizen right or as a human right. And we can afford that. It is for finance. It's not the problem. The problem is the mentality that we stick to old behaviors, old ideas, um, to the roots of slavery that people can be bought and you give people money and they do what, what you want and all that stuff. So an unconditional basic income is a cultural impulse. It's a revolution in our minds and our behaviors. And by this, it is much more than just money. It's a progress of our society and civilization 
And I think that country that implements basic income, unconditional basic income or universal basic income first, will make a huge step uh, forward in the future. And in the United States, now with that new government, I know that people in it, in particular Kamala Harris, um, know about basic income. She is in contact with people who are working on it. And maybe we have a huge chance to come closer to, the, to an implementation of this human right in the United States so that the United States can get the lead again and, and give an example and being a role uh, model for others. This is, I guess, um, one part of the target and challenge of this radio show, maybe to connect the people, to bring people in also from the politician side, um, the activists or the groups or the mayors, which are for an unconditional basic income, there are a lot of in the United States, um, and to make it more clear for the audience, for, for, for the broader public, uh, how many people are working on it, how far it is, how many pilot projects already are running in the United States, and um, to get a better insight about this new kind of income. So it's not a payment, it's not giving money for getting something in return, it's not a social benefit security, it's, not, um, it's, it's um, independent of what you need, your specific life situations or the circumstances. It is, like Diana said, it's a right, it's a right to live. And the right to live, if you would think about it, you would see the right to live in real is given by an income. So the basic income for everybody to live should be unconditional. It should be um, that we trust each other, that we give each other a welcome on earth, a welcome in our society. So to set people free, to give them the opportunities and possibilities to contribute and to lead their life more than today by their own ideas and their own responsibility and they, their own capacities. So this will cause a huge step and huge push for initiatives, creative and responsible acting in the social field and everywhere. And it will, um, it will push the economy because it's more flexible, it's more motivation, self-motivated work, it's a broader range of awareness of what is, what is the demand, what is needed, you can act more quickly, more directly, all that stuff. So it's brilliant, but it's a far way to get it because we have so many old ideas of how it has to be. Um. You know, you, you mentioned, you know, that it's starting to uh, uh, kind of take off here to some degree in this country. And I just wanted to make sure I just saw a story earlier today that the uh, CEO of Twitter, a guy named Jack Dorsey, just donated $15 million to oh, the uh, Universal Basic Income Program uh, that the group of mayors have put together, uh, led by Mayor Tubbs out in Stockton, California. I think there are a dozen mayors from uh, uh, major cities across the, the, the states, including LA, Pittsburgh, Richmond, New Orleans, and others that have committed to uh, basic income programs in their cities. And uh, this guy, the CEO uh, of uh, Twitter just donated 15 million. His second uh, donation, they had previously donated $3 million. So it's starting to get the attention of some of the folks on the uh, upper end of the stratosphere. This guy, of course, the CEO of Twitter is a, is a billionaire. So when you start to get the attention of folks like that, that uh, and not just attention, but capital, um, I, I think maybe we're starting to move in, 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 in the right direction. Um, certainly it's, it's, it's uh, a big step from where we were a year ago when we first started talking about this stuff. And I remember when Mayor Tubbs uh, from Stockton stepped out there, he was, he was alone and now he, he's, he's got quite a group uh, uh, with him. And uh, I'm, I'm wondering what you guys think in terms of, uh, I know we've talked on this show about starting an initiative here in Harlem. And uh, I'm wondering what you guys think about 
you know, how we might be able to do that, uh, you know, whether or not that's uh, public financing or private financing. I, I don't really have uh, much faith in the city of New York getting by and something like this, but maybe something on the federal level. I know, Diana, you mentioned uh, that Kamala Harris uh, had at least spoken up about how important a uh, UBI could be. Yes. But, but, but I'm wondering whether or not, uh, you know, what we're seeing from this Twitter guy and these dozen or so mayors, whether or not that portends something, whether or not we can kind of like, you know, kind of jump on that bandwagon and get something going locally. What do you think, Dan? I think that's great. Um, if we, going forward for the year 2021, it would be wonderful to get something started. Do the invite and let's see how we can build it around those that are interested in finding a place to actually, you know, uh, park their information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think it'll be great. Mm -hmm. So, so I mean, I'm kind of reading between the lines from something that, that both of you guys said. Are, are, are you guys thinking about maybe somehow we should create some sort of local clearinghouse or resource depository for information about UBI, or at least maybe for folks in our community and in, in this area? Is that one of the things I'm hearing? Uh, for me, yes. I believe that even though it's being spoken of, I don't believe we have really, uh, the message is not out there, you know, plain and clear. And I believe that we are doing something that no one else is doing, meeting monthly to talk about it among ourselves. I know there's a lot of instructors meeting, there's classroom settings here, uh, like at NYU and, and uh, CUNY, but I believe there's nothing like what we're doing on uh with a multi-level education on UBI. Mm -hmm. You have an instructor, you have me who's just a novice in this, you're a novice too, and we are, you know, the groundkeeper. I think we are just the perfect mix to get something started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, you know, we, we certainly have our, our communication tools, uh, you know, right. thanks to uh, WHCR 90.3 FM. Yes. We have this radio show, Community and Technology, every week, which is a, a platform that we've been talking about uh, a UBI on. And of course, there are other, so many virtual platforms, uh, you know, the social media. And um, so, you know, I, I guess I'm, I'm just kind of throwing it out there. Uh, you know, we talked about it a little bit before we went on air about just kind of expanding our outreach and expanding our, our, our media footprint, if you will, to include more folks and bring more people in. And, uh, you know, if we're gonna get something started in, in our area, I think that's gonna be uh, our, our requirement. Uh, you know, maybe you could tell us a little bit about some of the uh, operations that you've seen. How, how are they able to build local uh, UBI initiatives. What, what was what 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 are some of the ingredients and some of the steps that had to happen? Well, <clears throat> at the university in Freiburg where I'm working, I just um, have had the initiative and brought together two teams uh, who will research about community currencies, a UBI that is based on community currencies or cryptocurrencies. So you can implement, for example, in Harlem or any community, an unconditional basic income by using community currencies. And they are working on that. They are researching on that. And there are already huge projects. For example, in South Korea, there's a project with, I think it's it's much more than 100,000 young people in the age of 25, 25 uh, getting a basic income paid out in a um, community currency currency. There are huge projects in Kenya where the huge project of give directly with 12,000 people giving an unconditional basic income. Along with that, there's a project with community currencies. Um, I think when we have more activities in Harlem, and I think Harlem is a, is a fantastic place for it, then you know an unconditional basic income is the question how do we want to have our society? How do we want to live? How do we imagine? How do we dream 
about what the world should be. Because an unconditional basic income first um, is taken away this, this borders and limitations in your brain. So not usually people don't trust, don't, don't are not courage to think about what they really want to do because they are living in that limited, limited world. Mm -hmm. An unconditional basic income opens up so much more opportunities and new perspectives. And I think this is a discussion that could be so interesting and so vibrant. So how do we want our society without the limitation that there is no money, I can't do that, and so on, and so on. I have to have my job. This, I think, is, uh, is something that we could make in this field of medias, that people come together bringing in their ideas about how the world should be or how, or how Harlem should be or New York or whatever. So that we, that we bring up this uh, beautiful power of people because most of people, they, they know about values, they know about good things and so much, so, so often goodwill of the people is blocked and then they commit crimes and they take drugs and so on. So there is so, uh, so, so much potential in the people and we could give them a space in relation to an unconditional basic income. That is, a, that is um, the initiative power for it, to talk about how do we want the world? And then we will see we need a basic income. So you can't stick to paid jobs if you want to bring up developing the society. And as you said, Q, there are mayors and there are much more mayors than on that list in 2017 when in Stockton they started with the project, there has been already 50, 50 mayors in the States who wanted to do the same project. And now it's much more. In uh, the state of Hawaii, uh, the House of Representatives in 2000, I think 16 or also 17, decided as a law in, in their, I don't know how to, uh, constitution or what it is, they decided that everybody, every, um, Every citizen of Hawaii deserves a basic income and deserves enough money to live. So, and they want to go in the direction of an unconditional basic income. The biggest problem for, for them is that um, they cannot limit people coming into Hawaii because of the basic income, because they are living in the United States, they have no border. But this is a thing where they are dealing with it. They are developing it. So what I want to say is, Everywhere in the States are things going on, developing on in this direction. And for me, let's have the vision, just the vision, even if it's a dream, that this show and Harlem could be a hotspot in this movement mm -hmm. and could gather people and could bring information about all the different things that are going in the United States. And, you know, I, my experience is, People don't know so much about what is in the other state, what, what is at the West Coast, at the East Coast, in the middle, and so on. There are so many projects, so many brilliant people are working on it. And as Diana said, now with the new government, there are more people in the government um, and, and institutions um, who are open for an unconditional basic income. And I think that could be a platform, this show too, for those people to bring in their ideas, to, to talk about that, what they want in this direction and bringing people together. So I think to create a community, talking about an unconditional basic income, and that means talking about what we want, how we want to live, how we want to create society and shape the society, what the values are, what my capacities can be as a contribution. So this is a huge field. It's not just that narrow, topic of basic income and also not basic income for the poor only. Basic income is for everybody. And it, it's an advantage for everybody to know I'm appreciated as a human being and not just as the function, the status, the money, my beauty or whatever. I'm appreciated as what I am, a human being in the same way is everybody appreciated. So this is, this is that new field for, for a society. And Warren Buffett told um, in, in, in a text he wrote, the, the, 
the most important thing, the most beautiful thing, the absolutely top of top what, what human being can experience, he said, is unconditional love. And he experienced that by his father. But you know what an unconditional basic income is? In a way, it is that there's a flaw of an unconditional love. We're starting with that. That's a flaw of the society. And then everybody is doing what he or she is doing and, and having performances and getting rich or not. But having this basis, you know, I say this just to say there are so many topics and so many values and power in this idea of an unconditional basic income. It's not just money. And... Yeah, this and Harlem could be a place where this comes together in real life from the from 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 the whole state. Well, that uh, I, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, and, and I mean, it's so important not to lose sight of of, of, of the spiritual foundation of of what uh, unconditional basic income does in terms of just freeing up the person to uh, pursue uh, their passion as opposed to just mere survival, which is what so many of us get trapped in, into. And, uh, you know, I, I, I guess there's been an even bigger uh, uh, impetus, uh, uh, again, because of the, the, the COVID situation. You know, I don't know what the unemployment numbers are, but I, I think we're in for a long, long, difficult economic downturn. And I think a lot of jobs are not coming back. I think a lot of industries, not industries, but a lot of businesses are going down, particularly small and medium-sized businesses. And I think there's going to be a big shakeout, big consolidation, and a lot of folks are going to be kind of left out there. And uh, we really need something like uh, UBI to give people a floor. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that there's going to be more and more people that are becoming, will be becoming aware and conscious of this. And I think that is an opportunity for us to, uh, to, to maybe begin to make something happen, on, you know, on, on the ground. Um, uh, and, it can, and it can unite the people. I think it, it creates cohesion. So that the basic is that we trust each other. And that is the basis for everything. The community comes from trust in each other. Otherwise, there are no communities mm -hmm. and there are no, no um, United States. You know, this is so important. And with this gap between rich and poor and all that and the hopelessness of so many people and no perspectives and no future, um, this, is, this is horrible. And that creates violence and that creates situations like civil war. So in a different way than we have had it in the past. But so many people are desperate. So many people are in, in an awful situation. And to rethink that and to say, well, we can do it better, can't we? We can do it better. And everybody deserves an unconditional basic income. We don't need that bitter need of so many brilliant people so just thinking that, because it's possible, you know, and an unconditional basic income is that tool and that idea that can create a new rising sun and a new, new united states of America and I, in other countries, of course, too. I'm sorry, can I just interrupt you for a minute? And because I just asked somebody to come on just for a minute because he's terribly, terribly busy. But I would like to introduce you to Mr. William Allen. Uh, he's a friend, but more than that, uh, he is running for a political office that if he is in position, we will have him as an advocate for uh, basic income because he is the one I spoke of that knows JFK, not the John F. Kennedy of the 60s, but <laughs> our JFK. And he is a believer in uh, basic income, universal basic income. So welcome. Hi, and, thank you. Uh, go ahead. Thank you for having me, uh, Diana. Uh, and uh, Enno Smith and Stu Reed, it's a pleasure to meet all of you. I'm, I'm happy to see HCR Radio still in play. 
Mm -hmm. uh, when I was a student leader at CCNY, I was one of the, the founders of that radio station. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Yep. Uh, so I was, when I was a student back in the 80s, I was a mentee of uh, Haywood Burns. I was in urban legal studies. I became the student ombudsman. I became the student rep on the medical school implementation committee and a whole bunch of stuff mm -hmm. that led me to be a student trustee of CUNY. And, and so I'm just so happy when you, you never know how you make history as a person. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it, it's like discussions like these, just okay. connecting to people to that can help save and change lives. And, and the work that you're doing and the discussion you're having is very important to me. One of my very good friends is James Felton Keith. And he's the one that inspired me to have an interest in this particular topic. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he gives me stuff to read all the time. And so you can count me as one of your advocates on this matter. Okay, well, well thank you. Uh, we, we, we look forward to your ongoing contribution. And if, if you don't mind, just tell us a little bit about, about your background. Diana mentioned that you may be running for political yes. office. What, 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 so um, I'm the first teenager appointed to a community board in the history of the city. Um, and at that time, it was a long time ago, um, I became the youngest person appointed as a trustee of a school district that was District 5 schools in Harlem. At that time, it was 27 schools, 27 principals. I was, what, 18 years old, and I, I found myself to be a boss at 18, which mm -hmm. inspired a whole lot of other young people to get civically engaged and involved. Uh, when I was at City University, um, I was a student leader. Um, I was responsible for making sure there was no tuition increases. More than so than not, I'm the person that gave uh, a person an honorary doctorate in abstentia in the history of this country. And that award was given to Nelson Mandela while he was still incarcerated. Mm. Uh, myself and Haywood Burns are the ones who got that passed and the board of trustees approved it. So that's part of my history. For the last 20 years, I've been a democratic district leader in Harlem. Um, and while doing I, that period of time, I was also, I'm the first uh, chief of staff of Harlem Community Improvement with my pastor, Reverend uh, Preston Washington. Currently, I'm the national crisis director of the National Action Network. The national president is, um, oh my goodness, Dr. Uh, Reverend Dr. Al Sharpton. And in fact, uh, on December 31st will be my last day to work at the National Action Network because Effective January 1st, I will be a full-time candidate for the city of New York, the city council of the city of New York, the same seat that was once held by Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Mm. And you can rest assured that I'm going to be that kind of leader that mm. Adam Powell was, uh, unbrash, unafraid, and unbossed. Okay. A little, little Shirley Chisholm in there, too, I hear. Well, she got it from she got it she got it from Adam Powell. Okay, so that, that he originated that phrase. Okay. And, and she did. Hey, 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 Stu, she took uh, it to Brooklyn. That's right. <laughs> that was interesting about Shirley Chisholm. In fact, when I was a kid, I got to dance with her at the Congressional Black Caucus annual weekend. Whoa! Wow. Uh, and got and got to talk to her because one of my mentors, Roll Aaron's, uh, who's now in his eighties, early eighties, uh, he was her uh, nursery school student. Mm. So was and so was my father. She used to be a nursery school teacher on 140th Street and Edgecombe Avenue, wow. right below City College. Mm -hmm. Wow, amazing! So there's 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 no part of Harlem history I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, yep, I live in I live in Harlem. I live in Graham Court Apartments. New York Magazine just did a big story on me in the building, 116th and Adam Clay Powell Jr. Oh, Boulevard. I missed that one. I missed that yep. story. I'll, I'll send a copy okay. of it to okay. you. Okay. Okay. Just send me a text. Remind me. I will. I will. I will. I was saying, well, uh, you know, how do you like that one? <laughs> so, yeah, William, I think um, you know everything about the history of Harlem, but <clears throat> let's create the upcoming history, the future. Yes, sir. Then other people can talk about the history we made. And I think one thing would be good to have to have some progress in regard to an unconditional basic income, maybe a pilot project, maybe something that gathers the thoughts of Harlem um, for this fantastic idea of an unconditional basic income. I agree. You know, what, you know what I would need? Uh, 
can you you can you create some kind of abstract or some kind of talking points? Yeah, can we? Um, <laughs> if you can do that for me, one page, um, you got me. Great. Okay. Because I want to be able uh, to make sure I'm talking about the key points in a way that people can understand it. Yeah. You know, sometimes people just don't have all the, if they don't understand, just like, you know, uh, the Affordable, uh, Affordable Care Act, people didn't really understand it and how it impact them. People just, just talk with titles, but we right. have to make sure that people understand the concept. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I, I will send you a link to some interviews I made with homeless people in Oakland. Talking yeah, I was going to talk about income. California or Compton. Who's yeah, the young yeah. mayor in California? Is it the mayor of Compton? It's yes. Stockton. Yep. Uh, he's he's actually had an interview with him before. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you've worked together, right, Eno? Uh, no, don't, no, we, we didn't work together, but I know it's, the... Um, the mayor, uh, tell those The mayor and, and those who um, initiated and sponsored and, and, and funded the project in Stockton. They are in Auckland, too, or one of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we've also just been joined by Miguel Walters. Miguel, welcome. Good, you got it. Miguel, are you there? Okay, well, may maybe Miguel is just listening. Um, Diana, this is really exciting. Uh, bring in uh, William Allen. Uh, uh, you know, we, we, we were just talking about how do we get started in creating something in Harlem. And here's a young man with uh, with energy and, and ambition. He really has energy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 not, he's not old like some of us. And, oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> not, not, not a kid. I don't mean, mean to be. Uh, actually, Will, now, William but, knows that I can keep up with him. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, um, let's put something together for him to, to put in his hands and, and definitely, uh, Diane, let's make sure he comes back in January on, on our next show. And, uh, let, let me just say that, uh, this is WHCR 90.3 FM, the voice of Harlem. You're listening to Community and Technology. I'm Stu Reed, your host. And I'm with my special, uh, UBI team, uh, Diana Blackwell, you know, Schmidt. And we have a special guest today, uh, William Allen Thank from Harlem, you. and uh, Miguel Walters uh, also yes, just joined us as well. Uh, uh, Miguel, would you like to say uh, a few words to our audience? You need to unmute yourself, Miguel, if so. Well, try that real quick, okay? We're both on this. Okay. Well, maybe okay, Miguel's not ready. Whenever, whenever you're ready to chime in, Miguel, please, please do. Okay. Thank you for everything. So, uh, so, so, you know, uh, it, it sounds like uh, maybe we've got the beginning of something here uh, with uh, with Mr. Allen uh, in terms of uh, putting together some sort of basic uh, template yeah. to begin uh, to uh, you know move forward with the idea of getting something going in Harlem. Yeah, William was very quick, so we decided I, um, I'm writing one paper with the main issues, main points of UBI for arguing that um, in the community of Harlem and other people. And I think that's great um, if William joins us and, and uh, we can start with some kind of synergetic uh, cooperation. And we are thinking about what can happen more um, in regard to the radio show and in regard to that platform that we already created, or in particular Stu and Diana, how can that serve better for a better world, which is uh, based by the freedom of doing what you really value, what you really want to do, and that's an unconditional basic income. Mm -hmm. Okay, D D Diana, do you have any more surprises yes. for us? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I really thank William. I know he was busy, but I said, if you could just give me an introduction mm -hmm. in five minutes. And, you know, I, I got a surprise, too. I didn't know his last day was the 31st. Oh, that's my friend okay. there. 
No, 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 no. Of course, once Mr. Allen declares, we're going to have to have his uh, his uh, opponents come on as well in terms of equal. Yes. Time. Just uh, yes, I, you know, I just in terms of. Uh, Yes. Uh, you know, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Because up yes. On the radio station. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. I know. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, Miguel uh, who, is who, Miguel's who's doing a forum. Who, who, who's the current there? Current? Miguel, how many people are running for um, are the seat in City Council? He's frozen. Uh, Miguel. Miguel is still muted. I don't know if you want to unmute yourself, Miguel, and uh, yeah. join the conversation. Oh, okay. Miguel. I'm going to take a guess and he can correct it. I think it's something like 13 people have wow. uh, the, yes, the field is quite big. Uh, yeah. Hey, who, so, who's the incumbent then? Is there an incumbent? Uh, who are we talking about? Uh, currently, um, Perkins, Bill Perkins. Oh, okay. Bill Perkins. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And do you know if he's going to be running again, or is he moving on? He's moving on. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay. So it's an open field. Uh, there's no incumbent. So. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it'd certainly be nice if we could get UBI on the agenda for all of them. You know what I mean? To get you know, kind of talk that up and put that on the agenda. Is something that needs to happen. Uh, again, Miguel, who's unable to speak at this time, is going to do a forum for the uh, NYCHA mm -hmm. uh, group here. So what he's going to do is put that on the menu, mm -hmm. on the menu board, I'm thinking food already, <laughs> on the agenda. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, so I think that will be one of the items because whoever takes over will need to hear that this is something that we want. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a security blanket for us. It's not that it's going to meet all the needs when it's totally active, but it's something that will definitely help us if we have another crisis like this. And it will help those that are still going through because the residue that has been left through this pandemic is going to be very, uh, very messy for a lot of people trying to get back on their feet. Yeah, and, and long term, I think. I don't think long we're going to absolutely this, you know, next year or even the next year. It's going to be a, it's going to be a while before right. folks rebound and the economy rebounds. And, I mean, because so as many. you know, mm -hmm. I was thinking about you know, because you know, like the question is always, what is you? UBI when you're talking to people, but what we also have to say, what UBI is not, it is not a stimulus. It is not something that is going to come one time or two times just to, you know, uh, motivate or move something forward. It needs to be explained as something that is a lifelong um, movement in our life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So true, so true. So, um, uh, I'm, you know, you, you mentioned stimulus. I'm wondering whether, you know, whether or not anybody has any sense of whether or not this new administration might initiate something along the lines of UBI or guaranteed basic income or at least some ongoing sustenance for families over a year or two years. Uh, well, what's your take on that, Dana? Do you have any sense what might happen? I, yes, I believe that they are going to do something like that. And, uh, but nothing can be done until it's clear that we have uh, at least equal representation in the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that uh, right now they're too short. If they get the two from Georgia, you always have Kamala um, Harris to be the... Uh, deciding vote and that will mm -hmm. always be a yes for the Dems and um, they do want something that will be longer term than uh, of course a stimulus check but I don't think they're sure how they're going to do it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they you know UVI is definitely on the pack you know on the mm -hmm. floor for that mm -hmm. for discussion mm -hmm. Well, well, again, I think ju just having the conversation and talking about it, uh, to Eno's point, it starts to get it in people's minds, and we start to think about it, 
and consciousness starts to shift. I think that's that, that that's an important part that that folks begin to 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 really think in different ways about you know how a floor an economic income floor can help free them up. And you know I think that's something that we have to impart in our talking points that we put together for uh, William Allen. So yes. that uh, you know, folks don't confuse this with welfare or with uh, uh, some other kind of subsidy, and that is really clear as to as to th th this is something totally different. Uh, when you agree, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so yeah, I think the the most important next step is that we think about how can we um, achieve. A better place to spread the idea. So how can we how can we be more connected or bringing in more people that um, that, that that they can have the experience that there is something where it is really going on. And maybe William is a very important man for that. So that more people from from parties from from the side of politicians. Uh, and entrepreneurs too can bring in their ideas why they are um, for an unconditional basic income, why they think that is good. And you know, the one one direction is it it it's, it helps the people, and the other direction is it helps the people to help other people, mm. to be helpful for others. And you know, this is what creates meaning in your life that makes sense and people need sense, making sense, meaning some meaning like they need food. And an unconditional basic income is not just um, giving you the basic needs, the opportunity to buy what you need to, to reach month end, but it enables you to give to other what you can give, what your talents are, what your love is. So. Think about that too. It is also about the contribution that you can give much better, much more from your own qualities to other people. And that highest quality of life, not just to have enough to, to, to eat or to have shelter, but the quality of life is that you can contribute what you value to contribute and to have the experience that you can help other people, you can do good things for other people. And ultimately, this is what economy is. You know, economy is not um, looking for profit for me. Economy in real, it's not an ideology what I'm talking about, it is what it is in real, is the social community. People are exchanging things, people are living from that what other people are doing. So we have to renew our understanding of economy at all. And if you do so in the 21st century and not sticking in the 19th or 20th century, then you see an unconditional basic income is so absolutely necessary to come to an economy of today. And that is that we can do the best things for each other and an unconditional basic income gives the floor for it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. We, we haven't, we, we, I we haven't heard from Miguel yet. <laughs> Just can can Miguel say a couple of things? Because I mean I have talked a little bit about it. Miguel. Miguel. Unmute. Right on, okay. Yeah. Okay. Hi, good evening. Um thank you. I apologize for being late. Um I'm just I'm I'm just taking all of this in right now because I you know it's something I believe in. I think it's a great idea, and I think something that's something that our community and many other communities would could you know highly benefit from. So you know, I'm just right at this point just taking it in, trying to learn as much as I possibly can about it. Um, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Diana, let me, maybe we can go around and just have some closing words from, from folks. We've got about five minutes left uh, for the end of this show, so maybe some final comments from everyone. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, once again, I, I thank you uh, for hosting us, and this is the end of this wonderful and strange year we had, 2020, mm -hmm. but out of the strangest has come just a beautiful uh just a beautiful future. You know, yeah, I have to look at the future 
today, even though it's not here, but this is the future. And I really am happy for the friendships, uh, the ideas that are actually going to take wings and fly. And uh, it's, it's real. So I'm really grateful for everyone here. And I um, thank you. Thank you, Stu, for hosting us. Thank you, for, you know, for sharing your late hours with us. And, mm -hmm. and my new uh, buddy here who I drive nuts. Thank you, uh, Miguel. <laughs> I look okay. forward to 2021. Okay. Mm -hmm. Eno, some final words from you. Well, Diana made that so good, and I would do the same to thank you in particular, Stu and Diana, for carrying this further on. And it's your strength that made it possible. And I would like to say that I really hope that, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about to enlarge and strengthen this show and activities in particular in Harlem uh, in 2021. That would be a huge pleasure for me. And I think um, it's the time, the time for the idea is come. And there will be in either case, something in direction of basic income globally everywhere and I think what we can do is to bring this idea not just as a, as a solution for the poor or something that um, keeps people staying at home. You can also misuse the idea of a basic income or unconditional basic income that we keep it awake and keep it bright so that it can, that it can be understood by the heart of the people and not just by the brain. Okay, well, I guess I'd like to thank both of you, Diana and Eno, for bringing this subject forward to uh, to me, as well as to our audience. Uh, you, you guys have really uh, enlightened me and enlightened our audience, I believe, with, with your insights and knowledge about unconditional basic income. And I, too, am excited about next year and the possibilities and and uh, you know, using the the challenges that uh, of the pandemic and and all the economic stress that we are still in, using that as a, as a springboard to move to some new solutions and some new ways of of, of looking at things. So I want to thank you both, uh, Diana Blackwell, you know Schmidt, and our guests William Allen and Miguel Walters for joining us today on Community and Technology. Uh, stay tuned for more uh, programming on WHCR 90.3 FM. And uh, happy holidays and happy new year to our listening Definitely. audience. Uh, uh, if, if we don't see you or hear from you until then. Thanks for tuning in. Good night. Good night. Good night.